Hey everybody, it's Que Golasso time. We have Fabrizio Romano breaking down everything you need to know about the Super League. We have everything, who's involved, what's at stake, the players and coaches asking questions, fans, of course, asking questions and so much more. We break everything down with Fabrizio Romano. This also includes Jose Mourinho and his exit from Tottenham. This and much more Que Golasso begins right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Que Go Lasso on this Monday, and Monday only means one thing, it's Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, how are you, my friend? Hello, my friend. I'm fine, I'm fine, thank you. Crazy hours, football is changing, so let's see how we develop, but I'm fine and we are ready to discuss together about it. Ready to discuss, and we have a lot to talk about, everybody, as Fabrizio mentioned. It is busy. We will discuss heavily the Super League. We will do this, I promise you. But first, I just want to begin with jo Jose Mourinho. Fabrizio, obviously, the announcement coming earlier uh, on Monday. They've relieved um, uh, Jose Mourinho of his duties. He's been fired. Uh, the coaching stuff has been done. Ryan Mason's taking over interim. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about this? Uh, you know, how early on we're talking and thinking about this? Yeah, the situation was really complicated. As we know, after the Europa League match, this was probably the key moment when Tottenham Board decided to change something at the end of the season, but also how it's developing in the Premier League. That's why they decided to decide immediately and to sack immediately Jose Mourinho. It was not related to the Super League team, so it's a lot of topics, but it's not related to the Super League. It's just about the results. It's not from Mourinho, but it's from Tottenham. So Tottenham Board have decided to sack Mourinho and he is not resigned. So it's everything so clear. And they decided because of this, uh, after in the last weeks, he had, he, Mourinho had some problems with part of the dressing room. This is the rumor. Uh, we also know that on the pitch, the team wasn't performing at the best level. So that's why they were expecting something different from Mourinho as for the team. And that's it. That's why I decided to sack Mourinho because of the results and not because of the Super League and how it's going to change football and if Mourinho is okay or not okay with this new football. So it's not related to the Super League and only the pitch to the results. And that's why Tottenham decided to go with Mason as caretaker manager. Uh, Phillips will work closely to him. And then at the end of the season, they will go obviously with a new manager. They are already discussing and planning for some meetings in the coming weeks to decide about the new manager, the president, and Liverpool. We will decide with the board, but for sure they will go for a new one next season. Okay, so they're already thinking about a new manager. Obviously, Ryan Mason, purely just interim uh, coach as well. You mentioned Chris Powell will be part of it as well to help out. Do they have any names at all for, for the new manager? No, at the moment there are a lot of rumors, you know, a lot of rumors about Nagelsmann as with Bayern Munich also for Tottenham. And we have rumors about Sarri, but at the moment nothing has been confirmed yet from Tottenham sources. They just say we want to meet the many managers and then decide about the best one. So at the moment there is still nothing advanced. For sure, many managers appreciate it, but nothing advanced yet. All right. So uh, listen, we're not even going to take a break here. We're going to keep going because Tottenham obviously part of the Super League the Super League, if you are a soccer fan, but you've been living under a cave for the last 24 hours and you don't know what's going on, uh, this is historic right now, honestly. Historic uh, sort of news coming out. Uh, just, you know, and we're going to break everything down with Fabrizio as much as we can, okay? So, but don't forget that cbsports.com, we also have everything for you there. But here, we just wanted to break it down for everybody who's listening. Fabrizio Romano, what is the Super League? It's like a new Champions League, an elite Champions League, only for top clubs. 12 clubs are part of this game at the moment. Three more clubs could be joining them in the next weeks, and they hope to arrive with 20 clubs in total. These two clubs are three from Italy, Juventus, Inter, and AC Milan. We have also English clubs with Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham, Manchester City, and Manchester United. And we have the best Spanish team, so Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Atletico Madrid. Today, many clubs from Germany have denied their interest to join this league. So we're talking about Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund and also Leipzig, not official, but from club sources. So the position at the moment is that these clubs are ready to play their own Champions League. So they won't play the Champions League again. They won't play the Europa League again, but they will play during the week in this Super League 
it will be like a new competition. Then they will have, after the group stage, they have the playoff stage to arrive to the winner. But it's something big because of money, obviously, because they will receive in total as amount 3.5 billion euro because of this new Super League. So this is the key of the story. Which is uh, financially supported by JP Morgan, I believe, right? So it has American investment. Um, PSG, also not part of it. PSG uh, going along with UEFA. Who is in charge of the Super League, Fabrizio Romano? Who are the main players who are the decision makers? So the president is the same president of Real Madrid, Florentino Perez, he's always been the man behind the Super League. He was working by many years around the Super League with many presidents. Another one, the vice chairman, is Glazer from Manchester United. And the other one is Andrea Agnelli, the president of Juventus. So, you know, they're planning for something big. But imagine that Andrea Agnelli was, till yesterday night, the president of ECA, so the European Club Association, the one who was working with UEFA to organize the Champions League. So imagine what kind of revolution is going on with Andrea Agnelli resigning from ECA and joining as vice president of the Super League. It would be like Messi joining Real Madrid tomorrow morning and changing football. So really, it's something incredible because many of them were not expecting this move so quick because really the timing is something surprising we knew about the super league coming we knew they were planning for something new we knew they wanted to do it but the way they did it how quick it was how surprising it was it's really incredible so that's why now many clubs from these leagues want to understand what's going to happen to our leagues to the Serie A, to the premier league to la liga and the others maybe that will join this this super league so now it's time for meeting and now it's time for deciding with uefa and fifa position Right. And John W. Henry of Liverpool as well, being a vice chairman of the Super League as well, we understand. So you just talked, Fabrizio, about the reaction. The reaction from UEFA, who, uh, as of right now, are in partnership with FIFA in accordance with condemning this as well. And UEFA came out with a statement alongside La Liga. The Premier League already made statements, etc. cetera. Uh, you mentioned, obviously, Bundesliga teams are not part of this as well. Um, uh, we believe also FIFA, uh, Fifth Pro, right? The, rep uh, the, the organization that represents yes. players as well have come out. So what are the latest reactions right now? How are UEFA responding? How aggressive is going to be the reaction to this? Because they want to start ASAP, right? They, they, they're not waiting till 2026. 20, they want to start as soon as possible. So what is the reaction from UEFA and everybody else who's against uh, the Super League? First of all, to be clear with our listeners, Champions League matches and Europa League matches for this season, so the semi-finals we are waiting to play, are not cancelled. So they are going to play these Champions League matches. It's, it will be regular, so nothing is going to change for this season. For the final Because part. three teams in that semi-final are part of the Super League, right? So everybody apart from PSG, basically. Yes. Real Madrid, yeah. Chelsea, and Manchester City, the semi-finals, they're all part. But nothing, there's no suspension, no cancellation. As of right now, Champions League semis are still going. Yes, and the same for Europa League with Manchester United and Arsenal. So, and we right. Roma and Villarreal that are not part of this game. So, um, at the moment, these are confirmed. What's going to happen is that UEFA are so strong in their position with the president, Chefferin, speaking some hours ago and saying and confirming what they stated yesterday. So, the position from UEFA is, if you want to do the Super League, do it, but you will never play again the Champions League. You will never play again the Europa League. You will never play again in the domestic league because, as you said, La Liga, Premier League and Serie A have joined UEFA in this war against the Super League. So no domestic leagues, no European Cups, but also no national teams for the player involved in these clubs. So imagine like Messi not joining Argentina or Ronaldo not joining Portugal or Harry Kane not joining England. So something crazy is going on because they can't play in the World Cup, they can't play in the Euros, and the same for European competition with clubs and domestic leagues. We have to add that in the statement of the Super League clubs, the founder clubs, they said, we want to play in the domestic leagues too. We say, okay, obviously we are not playing the Champions League, but they will, we will have the Super League and the domestic league. But all the domestic leagues are now stating that they won't accept this situation. They are going against the Super League, and together with UEFA and with also FIFA. As you mentioned, FIFA and also FIFA Pro with the players are totally against this new Super League. So let's see how we develop, because it will be a big war, in my opinion, a big war with lawyers, a big, one, big war between 
UEFA and FIFA finally together is one of the first time they are together with the same position on something so big. So they're going to fight to keep the actual situation. Let's see if they can find an agreement together with these top clubs or if the war will start in the summer. Because as you said, they have the intention to start with the Super League in August or in September and will be something incredible also because of the time. Yeah, and the European Championships as well are this summer. Also, that's a UEFA product as well. So you're talking about World Cup, uh, international competition, quite incredible. What has been the reaction from former players, coaches? I mean, I'm just reading Thomas Tuchel, you know, has been very diplomatic about it. Obviously, what else would we expect from, uh, you know, he's not exactly going to rebel against his recently new club. But what is the overall reaction from other folks uh, who, who are taking this in? Yes, there are different positions. Obviously, at the moment, the clubs involved are just staying with the same one, the same announcement they did yesterday night. Talking about players is so interesting to see how they are going. For example, Ander Herrera from Paris Saint-Germain, from a Manchester United player, he's been one of the first to say, I am against this kind of football, rich and elite football. Uh, we want different stories like Leicester, like Atalanta or the or like Ajax or different ones. So players... Many players are going to stay against the Super League. About the managers, you know, uh, the position from Hansi Flick one, was one of the first going against the Super League because we know that Bayern Munich has Paris Saint-Germain and as many other clubs at the moment, they have no intention to join the Super League. So Hansi Flick said, is something not good for football? So I'm convinced that it wouldn't be positive for European football. But at the moment, he also knows that nothing is 100% sure yet about Bayern Munich. So yes, it was his opinion, but we also know that Hansi Flick is going to leave Bayern Munich at the end of the season. was another news of, of this week. So, you know, many things could happen, but we expect reactions, in my opinion, from the big ones, like Florentino Perez, like Andrea Agnelli, like Glazer, like many people involved in these top clubs that have to explicate what they want to do after the position of UEFA. Because now we have the position of UEFA, as I said, with Chetrain saying, Forget about the Super League because you will never play again in the national team and in domestic leagues and European Cups. But let's see now what they want to answer after this strong position from UEFA and FIFA. Because about the managers, they have all the same position. Okay, We're not so convinced because of European football. I don't have anything confirmed about manager resigning from their job because they are against the Super League at the moment. So let's see how we develop. But at the moment, as we said, it was not the case for Mourinho, but I don't have any news about other manager intention to leave the club because they are going to join the Super League. The fans are furious and we can understand them. But at the moment from the clubs, nothing has arrived after the official statement yesterday night. Yeah, the other thing that we're reading is that some clubs like Arsenal reportedly are already going to plan a meeting with their players and the teams just to explain everything that's going on. Uh, also, what's going on later this week, Fabrizio Romano? Are, are, is the Serie A going to meet? Uh, is La Liga going to meet? Uh, is this going to happen in the, in the near future? Yes. Today there is a meeting with the Serie A without Juventus in Inter and in Inter and the Milan because obviously they are in the Super League part. So the other clubs want to know what's going to happen. There are 17 clubs that are going to meet and decide together, OK, now what we have to do with these clubs want to join the Super League. The same will happen in La Liga on Thursday when they will meet with the big clubs and decide with Sevilla and the others and Valencia and Villarreal what they have to do right now with this kind of situation. So obviously now also from the leagues and not just from the national teams or from the top clubs, they want to know what's, what's going to happen. And in my opinion, now is really the key moment to understand also for the Euros, because as you say before, Euros are so close. And also imagine, for example, a Champions League final with Alexander Cheferin going to give the cup, for example, to Manchester City after they decided to join the Super League. So what's going to happen also by the formal point of view with these clubs involved right now in the Champions League and Europa League? So it's something really, really crazy to see how it develops. Absolutely. Insane. And, and, and yeah, go ahead. Just something behind the scenes, because you before said um, players now are waiting to have something to, to understand how it's working. Imagine that yesterday afternoon and tonight I received like five or six messages from players asking me what's going to happen, how it works, what will be this new world. Because players are asking team. you. Players playing in top clubs involved in the Super League. They say, can okay, you tell, well, me, can you tell me one name? I will never say one name in my life. <laughs> but imagine how crazy this, how crazy this is. Players are literally asking you uh, yeah. what's going on because they themselves are they left in the dark. They don't know. They don't know. Yes, yes, yes. It was so quick and so secret. We, as you said, we know about the Super League, okay? We knew by many years, but 
they were prepared to do it. They were not aware about this and this craze. It's really, really crazy. This is unbelievable because they are an employee of the club and they deserve to know just as much as anyone that holds any kind of, uh, you know, board importance in this. It's, it's amazing to me that they're, some are just being left in the dark. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, the, un- the last thing that I'll ask you, Fabrizio, and thank you so much for explaining everything, is I'm wondering, what do you think is going to happen in the next few months? I know that it's a guess and an, uh, an opinion, but I'm sure that legally, this is just going to be an absolute mess because you also, I'm reading as well, you know, there are certain clubs and also specifically how Boris Johnson has been talking about it, Emmanuel Macron, how, you know, legally, you know, can a club make a decision, right? Uh, without, you know, you know, the approval of the league or, 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 you know, an institution that holds that team week in and week out. So what do you think will happen in the next few months? Sources close to these clubs, and to the leagues too, are saying it will be a real war, a big war by the legal point of view, and not only because they have to decide together how to go on with, with European football in general. So it will be a big war. And if you give me this question, my personal feeling and my hope is that they can find an agreement at the end of this story and to give us back the Champions League, maybe with these clubs with many power, okay, many powers, okay, changing their position, maybe have something guaranteed in the Champions League. So changing the Champions League is part of the game because as we stated today, the Champions League had the meeting, the UEFI, the meeting for the Champions League and the new Champions League set to start in, in 2024. So it will be something big with 36 clubs involved, change in the Champions League. But let's hope that they can find an agreement to have the 12 clubs back in the Champions League and change the position. But at the moment, they are ready to go and to fight and to have this war because they want the Super League. And I still remember one sentence from, from Andrea Agnelli who always said about this Super League as his dream one day. And he was saying... It was like five years ago or four years ago. And imagine that we love the Champions League. All people in football are following the Champions League. But the value of the Champions League by the economic and financial point of view is so many times less than the NFL. And it's crazy because if you talk with fans of sports in the world, of course, NFL is important, but Champions League is considered the best show after the NBA in the world. And the value is lower, so, so lower. So we have to change. We have to go with the Super League. People in the world want to say, want to see every week Barcelona, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester City, Real Madrid, Juventus, this kind of matches. And so they were fighting for this. Now they have the Super League and they want to protect this elite football. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Unbelievable. Uh, the future of football, to be honest, uh, hangs in the balance. Fabrizio Romano, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure that you follow him on Twitter, Instagram, Fabrizio Romano, as well. Read all his content on CBS Sports. Thank you so much, Fab. Thank you, my friend, as always. Hey, everybody. I want to thank Fabrizio Romano for joining me today. Don't forget, if you want more of us, follow us on Twitter, Que Golazo Pod. Listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and so much more. We're on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Que Golazo. We're on cbsports.com as well. Keep following us. We have much more content coming up. Have a great, great beginning to your week. Hey.